obviously living with autism, I have sort of a different uh, background than most. So my brother, Connor, um, has autism, and um, whilst it does provide its challenges, there's certainly been, it's far outweighed by some of the comical and enjoyable moments. I think growing up with this person and you're seeing this, you know, very unique individual and you're sort of seeing him day by day, um, you know, there's different behaviours, um, different things that, you know, certainly are surprising at the time, um, and you just learn to love everybody for who they are, and that sort of ties in with the uniqueness. Connor, he's uh, well known as Con Dogs, Dogs, or Mr. Burns. Uh, that's what he goes by. He doesn't go by Connor with me. Uh, with Mum and Dad, he certainly does. Um, my sort of friends came over one afternoon, and uh, yeah, they sort of, sort of started calling him Con Dogs. And he uh, usually didn't like being called anything other than Connor, but he obviously really liked my friends, so we sort of ran with it. And uh, he lets myself and all my mates call him Con Dogs, which then evolved into Dogs. Um, so he never gets Connor from me, it's either con dogs or dogs. And uh, he also has taken a big liking to the Simpsons. So he started calling himself Mr. Burns. Now I wasn't quite sure why this was, but it turns out uh, he definitely likes money and he gets everything, you know, obviously when he has his money, he can get whatever he wants. So he calls himself Mr. Burns, he's rich. So uh, that's the story there. And he calls me Lenny. I don't know why from the Simpsons, um, but. There we go, I've been Lenny for about seven or eight years now, so I don't know why that is, but uh, yeah, just um, him, I suppose, yeah. yeah. Going out with him has been fantastic um, for my own personal growth, um, to sort of see um, you know, this wonderful human being uh, grow up, you know, alongside me and sort of see his development, you know, from being a very shy and, you know, very introverted and you know in many ways he still is but you know he's turned into a very bubbly a very funny character and it's diff definitely a different sort of um, timeline as to sort of you know what I experienced with my friends and myself but um, to see him grow up into this um, unique individual has just been fantastic and mum she put up on the fridge she'd have a hundred jobs and every time we do a job whether it would be doing the dishes or taking the recycling out he crossed one off for whatever reason, he loves his uh, video, so we've still got an old VCR at home. And he, yeah, he'd be going up shopping, and he'll just find whatever he likes. It could be from like 1992, just like a video that you'd never find by DVD, and that's his goal. So it costs mum one dollar every time we go to the, the op shop, but that's what he wants. So it's better than you know going to Target or Kmart. He very much loves that. So cost efficient, and he gets a lot of jobs done. So and he loves taking pictures. So mum had just got him a new camera for his birthday, and this was his first trip ever away um, from home. So with with the school that he was going on, and mum had said, you know, look, we've got you this camera. The only thing you need to do is take pictures of all your friends. So he goes, yeah, no worries, that'll be fine. Comes back. Mum sees it, you know, when she puts it on the computer and she has a look, there's over 600 photos. Oh, Connor, you've done really well, you've done really, really good. And um, every holiday we go on, he gets to bring three toys, They're about this big, they're tiny, and he takes them wherever he goes. Anyway, 600 photos of his friends. Mum opens the camera up, there are the three little toys lined up in the snow, three little toys lined up on top of the snowman, three little toys on top of the TV. There wasn't one human being in any of those 600 photos, just his three toys in all 600. So um, that's just, I suppose, um, you know, just a prime example of, you know, sometimes how autism is just down the line. It's, he's, they were his friends, they're his friends at home. So he brought them on his little trip. They're his friends on the trip as well. So um, yeah, funny, funny story that one. It's taken a supreme courage and patience for mum and dad to not just have me, myself, um, which is, I'm um, 18 months older than Connor, but he's also got a twin brother. Um, so there's three kids under 18 months old, one having autism. Um, certainly wouldn't have been an easy time, but for them to sort of raise three children, and you know, Connor included, who's just such a calm, happy boy, um, it's just a huge kudos to them. I can't thank them enough to have, you know, for myself, to have brought up, been brought up in such a positive um, household, I suppose. And, Connor has benefited from that calmness and that time and that patience and you can just see the growth he's had um, you know, from early days to see the person he's become has just been awesome. And then Connor himself, I mean, he's certainly the person who I think about most, like every day, um, missing him. Every time we're sort of on the phone, you think he's Lenny. Lenny, when's Lenny back? Um, he's in London, but doesn't sort of understand when I'll be back. So, and um, that's pretty tough. But uh, yeah, certainly missing him, he's, uh, you know, 
I think with my girlfriend as well, he's been so accepting and he always asks where's Maddie and he makes connections really easy and he, I think he really connects to good people and um, yeah, certainly missing him and uh, yeah, the love I have for him is yeah, immense. I think for me the big thing is definitely celebrating uniqueness. Um, that's not just in teaching and learning, it's in every aspect of life. Um, obviously when you're growing up, I was sort of used to a very unique individual um, living with him. So I think um, for me, meeting people in everyday life, I can sort of say, oh, you know, that's a little bit different. No, I really embrace and I love characters and I love how everybody, when they're comfortable to be themselves. And I think in teaching with SEN as well, it's really put me in good stead to sort of make the transition across from mainstream teaching, where, where that's where I've been, to jump into SCN with, you know, not a lot of experience in this teaching sort of thing, but um, in terms of going into the classroom, I've really enjoyed it. And I think it's been an easy transition personally because I can, um, you know, obviously be very patient with them because you learn this patience through, you know, seeing how individual they are, what their triggers, or you know, what they enjoy. Every single person, as we know, um, whether they have autism or not, is so different. Um, but certainly in the case of, you know, SEN and autism, it's definitely put me in good stead to sort of be patient with um, everybody. Um, it takes some people, you know, more time to get used to you just like in everyday life, you know, whether it's sporting, music, however you're meeting your friends. Um, it's just been, it really taught me, yeah, to celebrate uniqueness, be patient with everybody, and then obviously the big one is love. So autism teaches you love um, over, over anything, I think, um, to love these people, to love anybody, because um, at the end of the day, they're just being them, and I think, um, yeah, if you just give anybody time, you'll be able to grow a connection. And certainly what I've done with my brother and in all the classrooms that I've been in. Well, I certainly think for people that um, haven't got the experience, like I said, I mean, I have grown up um, with my brother, but I didn't have any SEN experience in terms of teaching it. Um, it is, as long as you've got a can-do attitude and you just want to jump in there, that's all you need. You literally just need an attitude. And if you just want to give it a go and you think you know the right mindset for it, um, you can do it and it literally just takes like my bits of advice would be just go in there and just take it for what it's worth i mean you're going to get you know some days which are very um erratic and they're going to you know there's going to be different sort of um situations and it's just taking for what it's worth i mean these children are just reaching out to you um you know there's different ways in communicating and yeah i think if you just got to go in with an open mind it can be the most rewarding experience Certainly that I've ever had and I think yeah, for anybody else that's willing to do that.